All right, guys, so let's continue with our uh, graphing of the rational functions and uh, spend some time thinking about what intercepts, or I'm sorry, asymptotes, um, how they how they come about, what they do, all that good stuff. Um, so let's take a look. I have three examples here, okay? We'll talk about horizontal asymptotes first, and then we'll talk about um, vertical asymptotes as well. All three of these actually um, are a, a, a distinct uh, situation. So if you take a look at example A, when talking about horizontal asymptotes, so a horizontal line, of course, is something that runs, um, you know, like from left to right. And basically what it, what it boils down to on these is what is happening as the x values get really large. Like, like on these graphs, as you follow along, you can kind of see it kind of, this one kind of flattens out, okay, on both sides. As the x gets really large or really small, as you go way to the right or way to the left, it appears there's some sort of line there, okay, that the graph is kind of floating out to, at least in the first one and then also in the third one. Okay, the second one, not so much, because you, as you can kind of see on the ends, this graph is going to infinity and the other side is going to negative infinity. And there's a reason for that. Okay, and here's what I want you guys to do to think about where that's happening and why that's happening. What you need to do, you need to look at the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. Okay, so the degree is just going to be the highest exponent. So in example A, both of these are x to the first power, so they are even, right? They're equal. Okay, so what that means, or what you want to do in that case, is look at what is called the ratio of the coefficients. Okay, so if we were to look at the, the leading coefficients, okay, in example A, since the degrees are equal, I'm seeing that it is a, um, a 2x over 1x, okay? And that ratio of 2 to 1 equals 2, right? So in this case, that's going to be the horizontal asymptote. I'm going to use blue here. Um, and I set the scale up like this on, for a reason. Um, the x values, it's a really zoomed out scale. But on the y-axis, that dotted line there is just y equals 2. And that's going to be what this graph will approach in the long run. And the thought behind it is because as x gets really, really, really large, okay, the idea is that the, um, you know, this, this plus 5 here and this minus 3, as x grows really, really big, right, x is going to 100, 1,000, a million, whatever, that plus 5 and that minus 3 are going to be kind of insignificant. So this thing's really just going to boil down to 2x over x. And since they're both x to the first powers, you can kind of think of the x's in a way as kind of like kind of canceling each other out. So this thing is really just boiling down to 2, okay, in the long run. So that's what the graph will approach. If you pulled up a table of values, you will see the y values are approaching 2 in both directions, right? It's, it's coming this way, and the y values get close to 2. It'll never quite get to 2, but it just gets closer and closer. And same thing on this end. As the x values get really, really negative, the y values approach 2. Okay, so when, we'll, we'll summarize in a second, but this is the case again where the degrees were equal. Okay, in example B here, the numerator has a higher degree, second power, than the denominator's first power. Okay, so again, when talking about horizontal asymptotes, which, which deal with end behavior, the plus 5 and the minus 3 are going to kind of not, not matter. Okay, the 2x squared over x now since the numerator has a higher power of x, okay, as x gets really, really large, as x goes to infinity, and you can see on the graph, since the numerator is bigger than the denominator, the entire fraction is just going to keep growing and growing and going to infinity, okay? The other end will go to negative infinity. What that means for us as far as having a horizontal asymptote is that it has none, okay? There is no flat leveling off like we saw um, in the first example. Okay. In part C now, looking at the degrees again, the, the denominator has x to the first while the numerator doesn't have anything. Okay, So in this case, the denominator is the bigger of the two. Okay, So that means when if you think about a fraction, if the denominator is bigger and just keeps growing and growing, right, as x just keeps getting bigger and bigger, the entire fraction is just going to approach 0. Okay, So in this case the horizontal asymptote will be at y equals 0. Okay, those are the three cases. Let's summarize it and then uh, do an example. So the three options, again, but one more time. So again, in these, the first example, the, the numerator and denominator's degrees were equal. 
So I, I knew the horizontal asymptote would be at the ratio of 2 over 1. Okay, that's the coefficient, 2 over 1. In the second example, the denominator, I'm sorry, the numerator's degree was higher. Okay, so that's why it had no horizontal asymptote. If, if the numerator's bigger, it's going to just approach infinity. And then case three, the denominator at a higher degree. When the denominator is higher um, degree than the numerator, that's when your asymptote is zero. All right, now one other thing to point out with, um, as far as vertical asymptotes, these, all three of these actually have the same vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote comes from values that make the denominator zero. Okay, I know there's a lot of scribbling on here, but the denominators in all three were x minus three. That's why you'll see, it's probably easiest to see in this one, through x equals positive three, that's why we have a vertical asymptote there. And so do the other ones. It's just harder to see because of the scale. Okay, but let's go ahead and do a full example where we walk through everything. Those are just, okay, for horizontal asymptotes. It only depends on the degree of the function. So horizontal asymptote. This is going to be kind of the summary page here. Okay, to determine that horizontal asymptote, which again just ties back into end behavior, which we saw earlier in the class. Um, there's three options. Option one, if the, uh, I'm going to just use n and d. So n is the um, degree of the numerator. Okay, and we're going to let d be the degree of the denominator. Okay, there's only three options. Either they're equal, we'll finish that sentence, or the numerator has a higher degree, or the denominator has a higher degree, right? We saw three cases, that's it. In the case where they are equal, that's when you use the ratio of the leading coefficients like we did in the previous problem in part A. Okay, use the ratio of the leading coefficients. That could be a fraction, that could be a whole number with the one in the denominator, whatever it is, that's what it is. Okay, example B, we saw the numerator had a higher degree. That's when there will be no horizontal asymptote. Okay, and the third possibility, if the denominator is bigger, okay, like part C, that's when there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Okay, so let's flash back and then we'll do a full that help you set up the um, asymptotes. All right, so let's take a look. Can we graph this guy? So. This one, they're giving us the function um, negative 2x plus 4 over x plus 1. Let's start out by finding the asymptotes, okay? And let's start out with the brand new one first, the horizontal asymptote. Okay, what I'm going to do every time, I'm going to look at the degrees, okay? So in this example, the degree, I'm looking at the numerator is a first degree, and so is the denominator. The degrees are equal, okay? So what that means for us since n equals d, we're going to use the ratio of the coefficients, okay? The, the denominator is 1x, the numerator is um, negative 2x, so that means our horizontal asymptote will be at that ratio of y equals, it's negative 2 over 1, which is just negative 2. Okay, so that means for us, at negative 2, we are going to have a horizontal asymptote. Let's throw that on the graph there, and then that'll be kind of like a setup for us. We'll know that it's there. Boom, okay, there's the horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 2. That's what this thing's going to level off to in the long run. Okay, what about vertical asymptote? So for vertical asymptote, think of a vertical asymptote as like it's something that blocks a y, uh, an x value, I should say. Right? Like a vertical line is going to go through a certain x value. What I'm going to do is look at the denominator, okay, and I know it's x plus 1. So I'm going to say, what value would make that equal 0, right? And that's when you get something that's, that's undefined, right, when the denominator is 0. So at x equals negative 1, we need to have a vertical asymptote here. And what it does, it kind of blocks the graph from going through that value, okay? Um, it's like a wall, kind of, right? So that's what each of these are, right? The graph will not go through those. Um, now, you do get some special ones sometimes when there's, there's more than one vertical asymptote sometimes you'll, you'll kind of cut through but um, for the most part a lot of these don't okay so what we know is that the asymptotes 
go directly with the domain and range. So your horizontal asymptote is blocking a y value. So that's taking that y value out of the range. So the range, okay, because this graph, we can we can graph it on Desmos or something to, to get a little better picture of it, but we're gonna see it's not going through y equals negative two. So that means the range is all real numbers except negative two. It's gonna go through everything else. Okay, while the domain is going to be all x values except the vertical asymptote. Okay, because again, that vertical asymptote blocks that x value. Okay, if we wanted to get a little more information on the graph, we could always do like we did um, before and find the x and y intercepts. So it's not a bad idea. Um, if we want to find the x intercept, we are going to let y equal 0. Okay, so I'm going to set the expression equal to 0. So 0 equals negative 2x plus 4 over x plus 1. And we're going to go ahead and solve that for x, right? So what we need to do first, we're going to multiply both sides by x plus 1 to get that out of the denominator there. Okay, the nice thing is that um, the left side is going to stay at 0. And it's just going to cancel out the x plus 1 down there. So we'll have 0 equals negative 2x plus 4. If we pick that up over here, um, we can add 4 to both sides. So 4 is going to equal negative 2x. And dividing by negative 2 will get us an x value of negative 2. Okay, that is our x-intercept. Negative 2, we have an x-intercept right there. Okay, now we can go ahead and find our y-intercept. Okay, to find the y-intercept, we're going to do something similar where we will plug in 0 for x. We want the y-intercept, we let x equal 0. Okay, so it's going to be y equals, um, here's the expression here, so it's negative 2, we're putting a 0 for the x's, over 0 plus 1, right? So this usually uh, simplifies kind of nicely with those zeros in there, so negative 2 times 0 is 0, so we have a 4 over 1, which is of course 4. So our y-intercept is at 4. Okay. Now we can just go ahead and graph the function. All right, I did realize I had a little uh, typo from before. This, um, when we did the x-intercept, it was negative 2x plus 4, so this should have been a plus here. So let's adjust that a little bit. When we solved for the x-intercept, I think we, I missed a, a negative sign up. So um, it should have actually been through when we solve that we would uh, we could we could subtract 4 from both sides and we'd have negative 4 equals negative 2x and then when you divide by negative 2 you actually get positive 2 so our, our x intercept should have been at positive 2 and I was realizing that when I was about to graph it that something seemed a little bit um, a little bit off and so it, it goes here and that gives me a better idea of what our graph's going to end up doing because um, I know we're going to stay within the asymptotes. So it's going to do something like, like this. And you can use you know decimals or something to help with the graph so you don't have to plot a bunch of points manually. Um, but I do need to make sure that you have the asymptotes set up correctly and know how to find the intercepts and whatnot. But to get the actual branches of the graph, they don't have to be perfect. I just want to see that... Um, the, the important key features are, are correct. Okay, and in this point, the uh, the key features are, of course, the asymptotes, and then those directly get you the, uh, the domain and the range as well, okay? So that's kind of the process. Um, I would set up the asymptotes first using the methods we talked about, and then, uh, you know, depending how accurate you need to be or how much work you need to show, um, you can always find intercepts and then use the uh, graphing utility to help get the actual graph. All right, so let's just set up one last one where we just kind of talk about where the asymptotes come from and stuff. We're not going to do a full graph on it, but let me just make one up here and see um, what, what we have. So let's say we just have something like, I don't know, um, over x squared plus 6x plus 8 or something like that, okay? And let's just say all we need to do for this right now is find the asymptotes. So just one more practice on that. So the again, the horizontal asymptotes is the um, new concept where we're looking at the degrees 
and I'm noticing the numerator is just a first degree function, while the denominator is a second degree function. Okay, so anytime the denominator is larger, right, think about a fraction where the denominator just grows and grows and grows faster, the whole fraction will tend to y equals zero. Okay, so this thing's gonna have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Now, as far as vertical asymptotes, that occurs when you get zeros in the denominator. Okay, it's, it's basically the values that make the function undefined. So setting the denominator equal to zero. Okay, this one's actually um, a quadratic function, so we could find the zeros like we did a long time ago. It is factorable into x plus four and x plus two. So they, this one actually has two horizontal asymptotes, one of them at x equals negative four, and one at x equals negative two. Okay, and then going from there, you could, uh, again, just use some sort of graphing utility to help get the actual graph, but we would know where the asymptotes are, negative four. Okay, we would have something going on at negative four. There'd be an asymptote there. There'd be an asymptote at negative two. And then the horizontal one would be through zero. Okay, and then you, you could fill in what the actual graph looks like again, like I said, using a uh, graphing utility. Okay, but that's kind of the new thing. Um, and just remember again, this goes directly with your range. The range is that y cannot be zero. Okay, and then these two go with your um, domain. Okay, and in this one, like I said, once you graph it, you may see it actually goes through the asymptote, so it may adjust the domain and range slightly. Um, but that's kind of the basic idea on those. Okay.